I have done a few other videos talking about how we can help what's going on in the world. I have done it previously in previous years and I thought I should make another one but this time based around books. Books that will uplift and educate as well as books that are fiction that are supporting authors that we previously have not read from or known. So I have a list here and I have small descriptors or just completely yanked the description from Google. Some of these I already have ready to read through audiobook, through Kindle, others I do plan on buying and I just wanted to put this out there because I feel like we don't talk about this enough. <laughs> So the first book is by Angela Davis, which is Freedom is a Constant Struggle. This is essays, interviews, speeches that they have made about black feminist intersectionality, prison abolitionism. I have seen this book recommended so many times and it is actually free if you have Audible. It is one of the free reads you can do. So I already have it downloaded to read. I think it is great to learn from people who have done activism if you haven't in the past and even if you have it's always great to learn from other people other people's experiences because my experience is going to be a hundred times different than somebody else's experience next is which is on palestine it is about how the international community can help support Palestine. Then we have Nora Barr's Freedom Freedman's book In Our Power, which is based off interviews of young activists from 2013 to 2014 and how they used their voices, what their movement was, and other experiences from across the United States. Now, a fiction book that is also a debut novel is Salt House, Salt House by Hala Lin. If I am saying that wrong, please forgive me. It is about a woman on the eve of Alia's wedding. Her mother does a reading of the girl's future and sees despair unsettling things about her and her children but then she also sees travel and luck and it's just about that experience it is a relatively short read and also on audible for free next is we do this till we free us and i have heard this recommended quite a few times so i pulled the description from this book because i didn't think i could do it justice summarizing it Organizing is both science and art. It is thinking through a vision, a strategy, and then figuring out who your targets are. Always being concerned about power, always being concerned about how you're going to actually build power in order to be able to push your issues, in order to be able to get the target to actually move in the way that you want to. Next by the same author and collaborated with is Let This Radicalize You. It is a book about their experiences on how to use your voice, build power for activists and organizers, as well as insight from other organizers. That is, I personally think, a great way to learn how to use your voice is by seeing how others have done it in the past and learning from organizers that have done it for years and are going to do it for years to come because that is how you continue to do things is to build off what other people have done but still give them the recognition that they deserve for what they have done. You have another fiction by a Palestinian author which is Mother Country. This is probably about three hours, like an hour to three hours long. It is about a young Palestinian American who learns lessons from their mother on struggle, investments, and, and resistance. And I don't really know how else to describe it because it is so short. I feel like it's just easier to read it than listen to somebody else describe what the book is about. Next is by two authors, Mark Lamont Hill and Mitchell Putnick, The Limits of Progressive Politics. And I am going to read what it says for this book as well. Mark Lamont Hill and Israeli-Palestine expert 
Mitchell Putnik spotlights how holding fast to one-sided and unwavering pro-Israel politics reflect the truth-bending grip of authoritarianism on both Israel and the United States. Except for Palestine defiantly argues that progressive and liberals who oppose regressive policies on immigration, racial justice, gender equality, LGBTQ rights, and other issues must extend these core principles to the oppression of Palestinians. And I found this book through a Instagram post talking about books that they would like for their Freedom Library. I think a great way to find other books if you don't want to get them from me is by seeing what other people who are protesting are recommending or are asking to read or saying they want to read. Another one is You Exist Too Much. It is a fictional novel and a debut novel and I have summarized this to the best of my ability. It is about a woman who when she was 13 she was berated for being impure in Bethlehem and she carries that guilt and stigma all the way through her life from coming out to her mother to moving to Brooklyn with her girlfriend. It is basically a book about finding oneself and your identity and being okay with who you are. Next is another book by Ilan Pepe? Pe Pepe? I don't really know how to say his name and I truly do apologize. He is a historian. He wrote The Ethnic Cleansing of Palestine. He talks about how the formation of Israel came to be from 1947 to 49 how the villagers the palestinian villagers were massacred what happened to the civilians and the children and how they were basically removed from their homes at gunpoint next book is by the same author which is the biggest prison on earth which talks about how gaza is and how it is basically a prison and just gives you facts about that about that and the conflicts they faced into becoming this prison-like state next is border and rural which i have seen a lot of people pick up whenever this first started in october and i'm gonna read the description that i have saved for it because i don't want to do it any injustices Exploring a number of seemingly disparate global geographies with shared logics of border rule that displace, immobilize, criminalize, export, and expel migrants and refugees. With their keen ability to connect the dots, Walia demonstrates how borders divide the international working class, consulate, imperial, uh, capitalist, and racist nationalist rule. Next is a minor detail, which you can also get for free for Audible if you have a membership. So there are two timelines. So you have the summer of 49 where the uh, the War of Nekaba happened and it talks about the tragedies that happened as well as a particular scene and a particular woman who had things happen to her and there is a trigger warning for this book. And then it talks about 25 years into the future when a young woman tries to uncover what really happened to the woman in 49. The last book is also a audible free book that I was recommended a lot and I have recommended in the past but I still haven't picked up and I plan on picking up soon which is the 29th year and I have a description for it and I think I'm gonna read the description for you guys. So for Halia Aliana, who is the author, she's 29 is a year of transformation and unhavel a year in which the past memories of family members, old friends, past lovers, the heat of another land, another language, and a different faith winds itself around the presence. Halia, ever shifting subversive verse shifts together and through different themes of forced displacement and the tolls they take on the mind and body poems leap from war-torn cities in the middle east to an oklahoma uh, olive garden and brooklyn brownstone from alcoholism to recovery from a single woman to a wife this collection summons breathtaking chaos one that seems into the bones of those olds that shape from the bones so these are some books that i plan on reading to help educate myself uplift others and support people 
some uplift voices, some teach you how to do it, and some is supporting authors. And I always recommend listening and learning because while all of us have a voice, some of us need to step back and listen to the voices that aren't always heard and this is a great way to do so. And I always believe in the power of education. Education is freedom and everyone deserves freedom. I always recommend trying to read books, whether you have libraries, even though not all libraries will have these books, local bookstores, even if you have to go to Amazon, there is a way to educate yourself in this sense. And, and if you have any recommendations for books that I should be checking out or documentaries or movies, or people that I should be following online that talk about this stuff more, please let me know what I can do and how I can help. I am always about educating, whether it be from workshops to protests, it is a way to change the world and everyone deserves a change for the better. So I am gonna go ahead and go and I hope to hear if any of you guys have read any of these or if you have any recommendations. So I will see you guys next time. Remember, education is freedom.